Action. Well, y'all caught me. Kristen stopped in. I'm right in the middle of building rods. I've got 20 sets of guides sitting out here. And, and you know, people always ask, why do you build your own rods? I mean, why don't you just, you got people to send you rods. Why don't you just use what they got? I like building my own stuff because I like, number one, a rod to be balanced on spine. I like to be able to set a, a rod, the grip, any kind of grip you want. You want wind grip, MHX grips, cork grips, whatever you want. You can build it that way. Handle length, you can make it however you want. Guide configuration, you want LZR guides, you want Fuji guides, any kind of guides you want, you can build it. Now Mudhole has 14 different actions and 14 different colors. So you can build anything you want. And when you go to a store and get it, you can't get it that way. So that's why I like to build my own rods. So the first step you got, you got the butt cap, the grip, the trigger, uh, reel seat, and then your foregrip. So, um, you got four pieces um, that, that we're going to fit to the blank, epoxy those on, they actually can sit 20-30 minutes and then you can move forward and install your guides and uh, this is actually half of building a rod right here. So the first step to building a rod is actually, you see the components, we got the butt cap, the grip, and the trigger, so we're going to fit this to the blank. So uh, mud hole has a set of reamers, it works really really good on a cordless drill. So. You just stick that in there. I can do this in my kitchen, so most guys can't and we get in trouble if we do that. So <laughs> we'll keep it on this plate right here. We're just gonna ring this out. It's still not big enough to go on the rod, but if you notice, this is tapered. The next one's tapered a little bit bigger than this one's bigger. So I've done this so much, I pretty much know what it's gonna take to make it fit. So we should go about right there. Let's see what we got. You can always take more out, but you can't add it to it. So now I want this grip to be about right here. So I got to take a little bit more out. Which is pretty easy. That should do it. So that fits nice and snug. The trigger. It's already matched up for this blank, so it's going to fit on there nice and snug. So that's just all there is to that. We got to ream out the butt cap. That's probably going to fit. Yeah. Stick our butt cap on. So we've been working on this for about what three minutes. We got everything fitted. So now all we got to do is epoxy this. And the butt end of it halfway is halfway, you're halfway done building a rod. So there's nothing to it. It's, uh, you know, a lot of guys are like, man, you make your own rods. There's nothing to it. It's simple as can be. So uh, this is half of it right here. So let's get some epoxy out. We'll epoxy this on and move forward with some guides. So here's the deal. You got Pro Paste. This is a 15 minute set. So it's a fast set. I like that because I can go ahead and put it on and in 15, 20 minutes, I can go ahead and continue to build my rod. So, um, you got part A and part B. Let's get them fairly close. Looks good right there. So we're just going to whip this up. All right, that's good to go right there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off with the book cap. And the neat thing about building your own rod, if you, if you got a like a, this is not a flipping stick, but if if it was, if it was like a, you know, like a seven nine big old heavy flipping stick, and I wanted to add a little weight to counteract the the, head, the you know being tip heavy, yeah, I slide me a little weight in there, and nobody never know it. So I always like to spin this on. I'll bring it back down, see how the epoxy is getting good on that blank. You just take and wipe your, your excess off. Just like that. Now what I, the, the beauty of building your own rods, once you build a couple of them, see I got another one just like this one here we're building. 
I got my handle length just the way I want it. So I'll take a sharpie, go here on my handle length, and I'm going to bring it, that, that handle down to right there. So I know how far I can set it. It makes it so easy after you, after you build one. Get those little pucks in on here. These things are so easy to build. You can build them anywhere. You can garage and out in the shop and the kitchen. It don't matter. Kitchen table. The kitchen table, man. If you <laughs> get by with your with your wife, you're you're good. Slide that jewel down. See that mark right there? We're gonna grab down to that mark. All right. See, we haven't found the spine on this rod yet. But here in a minute. After I put this trigger on, then we're going to find the spine. That's like the most important thing of building a rod is finding the spine. So that's what makes a, a rod so good. You don't find that much in a store. So that's what's cool about building your own stuff. Beautiful. Just like that. Wipe off our excess epoxy right there. Now this next step is kind of important as well. So right here behind the trigger, you got a vacancy in this rod, so you got you got to pack your epoxy in there. Now this fits really super tight. If this had a bigger gap in it, I would take a slide of O-ring in. Um, I'd pack it full of epoxy and then put an O-ring on it. And then put more epoxy down. That's a cushion that keeps it centered. But this one here is so tight, we don't have to do that. A lot of guys will take and put tape on the threads right there, which is a good idea. But if you're careful with it, you can just keep it on that first guide right there, first thread right there, and you're fine. But what I'm doing is packing epoxy down behind that real seat right there. So you're trying to fill in the space. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, your your blank's going to move inside your trigger. So. That's all you got to do. That, that there, that epoxy gets hard as, as a rock in about 15 minutes. So we're going to put our ring on here. Just like that. It's, you know, it's a really good idea to put tape on those threads, but as long as you make sure you got them clean, you're fine. So all this here is built now. We're gonna check the length. I got it set the same length as this other one, so it's just where I want it. Now we're gonna check the spine on it. This is very, very important. You just push down about where your first guy would be. Three quarters wet, push up. And you roll that thing and it'll stop right where the spine is and it's gonna stop there every time. See where that trigger stops? So yeah, yeah. Get a little happy jack here, slide that trigger straight up and down, we'll be good. Yeah, this is this is the step right here. Okay, so we got the trigger straight up and down now. So I load that rod, I push down on it pretty hard and that thing stays. If it wasn't on the spine, it'd roll out of my hand. It'd keep rolling. It'd keep rolling, so you check it. See, it's gonna stop there every time now. I mean, every time it's gonna stop right, right there. We might be off just a whisker. Push that back to the right just a little bit. Okay, so we're good right there. The rod's right dead on the spine. Everything's good. So it shouldn't snap in theory. No, it's not going to. That's, <laughs> that's the most important part of building a rod. And when you buy rods from a store and you get this one, man, there's just something about this rod I like. More than likely it's on the spine, just what we just did there. It takes about 10 seconds to do, but for some reason, uh, production rods don't get done that much. So uh, I take a little, you can use stuff, you know, some solvent, goof off or whatever, and I'll actually rub the whole rod down, make sure there's no excess epoxy or anything on the blank. These threads that we was talking about taping off, whatever's on there, it just wiped off with, you know, with that goof off. So uh -huh. wipe it off around the trigger. And we, from here, we can set this rod down for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 
Then we can put it on the on the rack and, and uh, put guides on it, wrap the guides, put some epoxy over the thread, and, and that's this rod's built. It's just that easy. So awesome, awesome. There you have it. So the cool thing about mud hole right now, they've come out with 14 different actions in 14 different colors. So what that allows me to do, if I want to, you know, all my jig rods or Carolina rig rods, my, my heavy action rods, I can make like this light green, this metallic green color. And I know that's for a jig or Carolina rig, whatever. And then if I want a chatterbait rod or spinnerbait rod, I got a go. So I can look at my rod box, so that color goes for this, this particular uh, application and I don't have to read labels and see what's what I can look at color and it's just so much quicker and easier so 14 actions 14 different colors man that's cool so now we got the handle and everything on <clears throat> I like to run a laser down my rod even though I'm not gluing my guides on I'm gonna use little bands to hold the guides on but what I like to do is run a laser down it so I can see exactly where the center of the rod is I put me a little mark right right on the center. You can see that red beam right on the center of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, right where that guide needs to sit. So when I place it, it's, it's right dead center on the rod. So the, uh, the laser's a pretty good handy little tool to use. Works really, really good, super easy. So it just really helps in placing the eyes right where they need to be. You know, so when it comes to laying the guides on the blank, <clears throat> what I like to do is use three different sizes of tubing and <clears throat> actually just cut little little sections. So the bigger your rod blank is going towards the butt of the rod, the bigger your tube needs to be. So about the first three or four, I'll use a, a bigger size tube and then as it, you know, you go down the rod, I'm going to slim them down. So that's what we're doing here. get down to the end we're going to need about that's a thinner three, diameter three yeah a little thinner diameter yeah that's that's all you need right there so once i do that i'll take the rod and i'll stack these down the rod you're so just, you'll just stack them on yeah you just roll them down and these things work really really good yeah, you can glue your guides on and, and all that. You can use a hot stick glue and things like that. But, you know, glue actually will become messy when you're wrapping threads. This just makes for a clean, clean job because all I got to do now is just slide my guide or anything right on that spot, wrap my thread, cut this little piece of tubing off, and it's done. So uh, it's actually, it actually takes a little bit of time to do this, but it, it works out really, really good. So, so once your thread is on, you just cut that tube off. Yeah, you just cut and, the tube and, off. And that's so, a yeah. placeholder for the. That's for, all it for, does, for, and for you know, and what I like to do is actually roll that tube, so then it yeah. becomes like a you know a, a small circular. Right. So I can just slide my. Yeah, yeah, I like to yeah. get it rolled up on on top itself. Just so I can just slide my guide. Right, yes, yeah, it's a rubber band. Slide my guide up underneath of it. Wrap my thread on. It. Once I get it started, I cut the band off. So. All right. Okay. So the neat thing about when you're using these bands, you can just take and slide your guide under, up underneath of it, just like that. So it holds your guide on. And it allows me to start my thread, and I can put thread all the way up to, to where the band starts, and I'll cut the band off, and the thread holds the guide on. So it's just a clean way to doing doing this. There's nothing else on it uh, for you know extra glue or whatever getting around your threads. Just makes a clean finish. So now that I got that on, I can start my start my thread. So I'm using the A A thread, which is very very small. So what I like about it is I can you can see these gaps, and I can tuck those in, you know, get them tight, clean it up. <clears throat> but what I I do with A thread because it's so small, I'll run down the guy and run back down it. So actually, double wrapping it, double wrapping, filling any any voids. So <clears throat> you can see I got the guide started right there. So now I can take and just slice that off, and then. And you can finish your wrap and, and then, finish my then wrap and then everything's all clean. Yeah. So I got I've got a bunch of wraps over my thread so I can cut that off too. Now I can finish wrapping my guy. Perfect.
right, now I've wrapped all these guides, 15, 20 minutes worth. Um, I shot a laser down when I set them, but now once I've wrapped them, you can bump them around and do this and that. What I like to do is, is I'll pull it out, and then I'll sit here and look. It's under the thread, so you can adjust them. And I'll sit here and get all of them just the way I want them. And then we'll, we'll lay our epoxy down on it. But we got all of them straight, but the last three I've got to move over just a little bit. This actually takes as much time as anything, really. Just in your guys. And this is just fine tuning, fine -tuning. right? Fine tuning. Fine tuning. And then and then you'll epoxy over that thread. Yeah, and once you epoxy that thread, clean it up down, real well. It's, yeah, it's, it's done. It's not going anywhere. So we've got one more I'm gonna adjust right there. So what I want to do is I want to adjust all those guys to right where I want them to be. Make sure they're all right in line, and then I'll put the tip top on. Last thing, and then I put a decal on the hook keeper, and then it's ready for epoxy. So when we made the epoxy for the, the trigger and the handle and all that, um, you don't have to be like spot on with it. You can be in the ballpark and it's fine. But when it comes down to the epoxy for the threads, you have to be very, very precise. So you got these little gauges, little needles with gauge on them. We got three on that one. I always make up more than what I need. That way I don't have to worry about running out. So. Get there out of that thing. So we got three on that, three on that. So you want to be right dead on with those. Make sure you get that mixed up really, really good. I stir, I stir that for you know several minutes to make sure it's good. Right. You can do this several different ways. You can put a coat on, come back, put another coat on, or I normally just soak them down, and this epoxy stays wet for so long. Just sit and spin and spin and spin. And so I'll get that on there tonight and then in the morning I'll come back and it'll be dry, be good to go. Fish with this rod tomorrow. All right guys, it is the next morning. So we were building that rod pretty late into the night. Um, so as you kind of saw in those last few clips, he had the rod just kind of slow spinning um, well, yeah, so, so whenever he was dabbing on the, uh, epoxy on, onto the guides and, uh, and, and, you know, all, all of the black thread, you know, you epoxy over it, what we did is we left the rod spinning real slow all night and that allows that epoxy to set up, you know, in a circular fashion instead of just dripping. So this right here is the finished rod. Close up of the guides there. Dress this up real nice down there. It's a real seat. Beautiful. Hopefully we'll take it fishing later today. Good right there. Looks good. Y'all might recognize that bait. 
Punch bug. Ready for battle. Okay guys, well, you saw it there. <clears throat> that is just kind of a, uh, a, 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 a real nice overview tutorial of rod building. Um, so that's what we're gonna bring to the channel is lots of custom rod building techniques once I learn them, of course. But that right there was a really good start. Terry's been building rods for a while. He's been with Mudhole for a while. Um, you know, he builds just an, an, an incredibly functional rod. It's not gonna break, it's, it's incredible. Um, he, he just really knows how to put one together. So um, now we're hopefully gonna take that rod fishing later today. But um, you know, that's just kind of an overview of how simple it can really be to get into rod building. Now obviously, um, you know, whenever I try it for my first time, you know, I'm sure I'll have some hiccups, you know, with the guides and, and tying, the guy, tying the eyes on with the thread. Um, but, you know, you just saw it done by somebody that really knows what they're doing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know about you, but that gives me confidence that I can do something like that. And, uh, and we're going to do that. So we're going to learn together. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, that's some cool rod building right there. And uh, some more exciting content still to come. Thanks, everyone, for watching the rod building tutorial.